Are house and land packages or established properties the way to go in 2023? We've actually done quite a few videos on this in the past. We've got a long format video here where Jacob's gone through around about a 45 minute chat which with an extensive case study, we looked through thousands of properties and new home builds that were done in, uh, in the Brisbane area. I've also got a shorter format video here, but I guess to cover off the basic key points in terms of established versus new properties. So kind of like to consider this like you're buying a brand new car. You buy a brand new car, you drive that car out of the driveway. More often than not, that car has depreciated value as soon as it's left the driveway. In terms of a new home build, a new home, there's typically a 20 to 30% builder margin in built into that property. So what you're going to find, and also you may also be at a negative equity point. So you may purchase a $400,000 block of land. You then put, in, put on a $500,000 new, uh, new home built on that property. 400 plus 500 doesn't necessarily mean that property is now worth $900,000. You may have built that property where the median value of properties in that area is $750,000 to $800,000. So you are now at what's known as a negative equity point. The other thing and reason I guess we look to avoid and, and I look to avoid new builds is because what you're going to find with new builds is new builds are typically around where there is further land supply. So you know, you've got stage one gets developed and gets released and, and all the lots get sold off. You think, fantastic, I bought that. There's no more properties coming into the mix. But then stage two gets released. Then so does stage three. So does stage four. And that really creates a slowdown in terms of it, it basically suppresses your capital growth because that new stock, why would I come and buy your $500,000 property? when I can go up to the road to Mr. Developer and he can sell me a brand new home, completely bespoke to how me and my partner want it for around the same price and I get a bunch of grants involved as well. So typically speaking, while that extra supply is coming into the market, that slows down your house price growth, as well as the lack of infrastructure. I'm yet to really see these new house and land package areas have a train line in place from day one. Great roads connected to the connecting major arterial. Uh, hospitals, schools all ready to go. You also don't know where the best streets are. You don't know where your po pockets of, you know, potential rent heavy areas versus your premium blue chip streets are. They might be telling you at the land office that they think they know where it's gonna be, but you don't actually know yet. So for me, that unknown commodity is also another reason why I don't wanna get involved in a, in a house and land package area. And for me, it's all about scarcity. So if I go out and buy an established property, there's no other land supply near me. There's no other supply going to suppress my house price growth. So that growth should be coming on automatically. The infrastructure's in place. So the demand for that area is likely to increase. And also the big kind of driving factor in why we target certain areas, there may be way more government LGA spend in certain areas. They need a bit of an uplift to kind of kick things along. So all of those are ticking the boxes for much faster capital growth because what you find in those new house and land packages areas is that for the first five to seven years, you'll typically get outperformed by inflation. Now, this is over a longer period. What we can't get sucked into is shorter time periods because there are some people who have built new house and land packages over the last couple of years and they're patting themselves on the back. I've made $100,000 or $200,000 profit but so did everybody because what happened over that period of time, you built your house and land package, but you signed a property on a fixed contract cost. Over that period of time, the cost to build a new home has gone up exponentially. So the base level cost to build a property has gone up. So in turn, so is the values of those properties. But if we go back and look over thousands and thousands of purchases, I mean, what a repeatable process whenever we're purchasing investments, you're going to get burnt more than likely in the future. You're paying the profits to your builder, to your developer, to the person at the, the land bank office. So again, for me, house and land packages are a no-go. Completely different, however, if you want to live in that property. How you want to live versus how you want to invest are completely separate amenities. But again, I understand that people are allured in where they talk about a brand new home 
well, go and speak to your building and pest inspector and ask them what are the conditions in terms of how these new homes are being built today versus how some of these homes built in the 90s stack up because the, the level of craftsmanship isn't quite there in a lot of cases. And also they'll sell you on depreciation. Well, depreciation's great, right? In terms, you might get as much as $20,000 worth of depreciation back. Well, if your taxable income rate is 25%, you're gonna get $5,000 back in your pocket. But if that means you've foregone 5% capital growth for each year for five years on that $500,000 property, you've foregone $25,000 plus of compounding growth each year just to pat yourself on the back and, and get yourself some depreciation. So for me, always established, I wanna know where I'm buying, I wanna know what I'm getting. And I'll, as, as always, capital growth is the most important thing. We're dealing with leverage when it comes to property investing. So I'm going to make that my number one priority. Guys, I hope that makes sense. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the box below. Be sure to also follow me on LinkedIn. I'll be posting a lot more data-driven content on there and we'll also have something big coming in the next couple of months. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.